So far, all of the programs we've seen follow the exact same set of steps. But what if we wanted our program to respond differently based on some condition that exists only when the program's running? For example, what if we wanted to make a game that allowed you to guess a number that the computer was thinking of? And if you guessed correctly, we would want the program to respond correct. But if you guessed incorrectly, maybe it would respond too high or too low. We'll be able to do that using the if-then-else control statement. Before we get into the details of the if-then-else syntax, let's go ahead and set up a program that we can use to play around with this concept. If you'll follow the instructions on this slide and get the code set up to the right, press pause while you do so, and resume once you're ready to go. Great. Let's talk through what's going on here before we dive into if-then-else statements. So, if you try playing this game and you enter an incorrect guess, like say two, I'm thinking of number and the guess is two, we get a pretty unhelpful result. Your guess is game over. However, if we guessed the correct answer here, 42, we would see that the guess is correct. And so this program is behaving differently based on a user's input. In the code, you can see that we're setting up a variable guess by awaiting the user's input on a prompt. And then we're introduced to the if then statement for the first time. So we're saying if some guess, the guess that was given to us is equal to 42, then and only then are we going to print this correct message out. The general form of an if then statement looks like this. You have the if keyword followed by some test, which is a Boolean expression. In our case, it was is guess equal to 42. And if that test condition is true, we're going to do what is inside of the then block. So we call if then a control statement. And what we mean by that is that it's a statement just like any other statement, like an assignment statement, and that anywhere you can write a statement, you can write an if then statement. But it's a little bit different than what we've seen before in that it, we're creating a conditional clause. So we're only going to do the statements inside of the then block if the condition in that test expression is true. And so just like a conditional phrase at the beginning of a sentence where you might say, if it is cold outside, then I will wear a jacket. Here we're, prep, we're, we're, adding, here we're adding a clause to the beginning of a statement. And so the syntax is a little bit different. If then statements do not end in a semicolon. The test in the parentheses must be a Boolean expression. The result of that test must be either true or false. We can visualize this with a flow chart or a control flow diagram. And the if then statement is a diamond. The diamond means we've reached a fork in the road and we're gonna go one way or another based on the result of some test. So when the test is true, we're gonna to go to the then block. If it's false, we're going to skip over the then block. We can visualize the a flow chart on top of the code in our actual program. So we print your guess is, and then we reach this if statement. And the if statement is going to conditionally execute based on the result of this Boolean test. So if guess is equal to 42, if that is true, then we will print correct. After we've printed correct, we will continue on in our program and print game over. However, if guess is not equal to 42, this Boolean expression would be false and we would only print game over. How can we improve this program? Well, wouldn't it be nice if it told you you were wrong instead of just saying game over? Let's try adding an else clause like the one to the right. So back in the example, if we write else, this is an else clause, we can print the word nope instead. And so now we're saying if guess is equal to 42, print correct. Otherwise, we're else print nope. So I'm going to save my program and that restarted my program in my browser. And now I will guess, say 41 or 31. Your guess is nope, game over. So notice that we have a different conditional behavior here. But if I were to guess 42, the correct answer, we see that the guess is correct. And so depending on the user's input, we are making one choice in our program or another, and then continuing on to the end. If then else statements are an extension of the if then statement. By adding an else clause after an if then statement, we can have some code that runs when the test expression is false. We can visualize this with a flowchart as well, where we'll start at our test, and if that test is true, we're gonna go and evaluate what is in the then block and skip over the else block. However, unlike an if-then statement, if that 
test is false, we're going to go to the else block, skip over the then block, and continue on in our code from there. What if we wanted our game to tell the user they guessed too high or too low if their guess was incorrect? Let's try adding the nested if then else statement that you see to the right in our code. So instead of printing nope, we will say if guess is greater than 42, then you guessed too high. Else print too low. And so notice that inside of the else block of the if guess is equal to 42, then print correct. Otherwise, we've got another conditional statement. And here we're saying if guess is greater than 42, print too high, otherwise print too low. So if I save my program and go back to my browser and try again, let me try running, say, a guess of 10. And we'll see that my guess was too low because the correct answer was 42. We could try this again with 100. The guess was too high, but if we guessed 42, we would see that the guess is correct. So the way that we think about the code flowing through this program is that if this statement is true, we're going to print correct, and we're gonna skip over everything inside of the else block. Even if there are nested conditions, we're never going to evaluate these because this first condition was true, we went into the then block, and we would skip over the rest. However, if guess is not 42, let's say guess was 41, we would skip over this block, we would not print correct, and we would then reach this statement. And we're evaluating top to bottom, the same rules apply here. So we're gonna ask is guess which is 41, greater than 42. No, that is false, so we're not gonna to print too high. We're going to print too low. Let's consider another evaluation here, which is what if the guess was 43? 43 is not equal to 42, so we would not print correct. We would ask this next question, is guess, which is 43, greater than 42? That is true, so we would print too high, and we would skip over this else. In any single run of this program, convince yourself that only one of these three messages will ever print. You could never write, run this program such that multiple of these messages would print at the same time. You'll be making use of if then else statements throughout this course. They're very prevalent in programming at large and understanding how to effectively utilize them can lead to very interesting and fun programs.